Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from the Camera Store. And today we have a hands-on look of the Panasonic VGH1. Hello to everyone out there in internet land. Welcome to the Blues Can. All right, here we go. The Panasonic BGH-1 is a very unique camera from Panasonic and something I wasn't expecting. I like cameras that have a viewfinder and a rear screen and a comfortable grip, and this has none of it. <laughs> no, this is a very pared-down camera. It's literally a cube that's perfectly balanced and symmetrical and meant for rigging. It's designed to go on gimbals, onto mounts, and things like that. And this camera is built for connectivity as well, and so there's a lot of unique features and technology that this camera has that really nothing else on the market does. The BGH-1 is a purpose-built camera for remote camera setups and live streaming. And we took it down to a local place called the Blues Can recently to cover an artist and to see it in a real-world scenario. Of course, we all know that a lot of things are happening virtually right now. We're doing all the Zoom meetings and team meetings and things like that, but also for entertainment as well. And this camera really lends itself well to being something that could be used for events, whether it's sports or music events. And so this local venue, The Blues Can, is interested in setting up something where they can truly bring the experience of being there home to people virtually. And so we thought this could be a perfect fit for that. Now, of course, we only have one pre-production sample, but it gave us a good idea of how this could be set up in this kind of environment. And being able to network up to 12 cameras together could potentially really give that feeling of actually being in an event space or at a sporting event right from home. Of course, all the connectivity bells and whistles won't mean anything unless the image quality is fantastic. And at the heart of this camera is actually a 10.2 megapixel sensor. It's micro four thirds, and it's the same type of sensor that's in the GH5S. And we've loved the sensor for a long time. It has dual native ISO. It looks excellent in low light environments. It's very clean and it has large photo sites. And so it's absorbing as much light as possible. The other thing is they've actually newly implemented this sensor they've been able to squeeze an extra stop of dynamic range. So it has a total of 13 stops of dynamic range and it also only has an electronic shutter. So they've done away with the mechanical shutter and so the focus of it is purely on video. And although it can take still pictures, it's really designed more for the video application and it's extremely fast scanning because it is the smaller micro four thirds sensor. And so it gives you the ability to capture 4K up to 60p, and it has a lot of flexibility with the video modes in that way as well. In terms of Kodaks, you can pretty much shoot anything under the sun. There's a lot of flexibility and options here, just like Panasonic is usually known for. It's exciting to see that you can shoot 420 10-bit 60p unlimited and 4K right to the memory card. And of course, if you are using an external recorder, you can get that higher 422 10-bit 60p 4K to an external recorder. We're also happy to see that just like the GH5S, you're able to shoot at 400 megabits per second, all intra, and so you have a lot of flexibility in terms of this camera, and so that you can shoot beautiful, clean looking footage that's very smooth. And if you're someone that loves the ultra slow-mo options, you can shoot up to 240 frames per second in full HD. Another benefit of this fast scanning sensor is it has very minimal rolling shutter issues. Again, super optimized for video. And if you're someone that's a huge cinema nerd, you can shoot anamorphically and you also are able to shoot and cover your exposures using shutter angles. Another thing that we're really happy about is that it would work into our workflow because we like the profiles that Panasonic offers. Our favorite is Leica 709 that's built into the camera as well as their new Vlog L profile. It works with the dynamic range, giving you more of that highlight information, and it's just a lot more flexible to work with. Now, we should mention, though, that it doesn't give you the same quality that you would see in the S-series cameras. That's the full V-Log profile, and that's still Panasonic's best option. When I was setting this camera up 
you know, usage at the blues can, I was thinking, I'm going to put the lens on there, I'm going to focus and forget it. But I realized this camera has a very good autofocus system. It's the same focusing system as the S5 with its improved algorithm, but a much faster scanning sensor. We also have face and eye detection, which works pretty well. Take a look at how it tracks my face in this example here. It's not industry leading face and eye detection, but it certainly has its application. Another big thing to note is that this camera is compact and it's designed without in-body image stabilization to save on that space and that weight. Of course, I think the main design for it is to be put on gimbals or on a sturdy, stable platform. Let's talk about handling or the lack of handling with this camera. There's no real right or wrong way to hang on to this camera because it doesn't have a handle. And that's very cool. Instead, we have a camera we're going to mount somehow. And there's multiple different ways of mounting it. And they provide all kinds of creativity. We've got three quarter inch 20 threads on three sides of the camera and two on the very bottom. This allows me to mount the camera however I want. If I want to hang it upside down or from the side, multiple different ways of doing this. Here at the Blues Can, we've used an articulating arm. We've used a tripod. We've used multiple different different ways of mounting it and it works great that way. Weighing in at 545 grams, this camera is a great base for a lot of things including gimbals. Because this camera is perfectly balanced, it makes it much easier to float on a gimbal. Like the Ronin SC2 I was using here, it was easily able to handle the weight capacity of this camera. I think with its size and its weight, we're going to see this camera find its way into all kinds of creative uses. Something I do like about this camera are the multiple different ways of powering it. Now out of the box it comes with an AC power adapter and I can work the camera just like that. But we do have the ability to put a battery on there as well. Now it doesn't come provided with it in the box. Now currently I'm using the BR59 from Panasonic. It's the same battery in their EVA1 cameras. Now we can also power it through Ethernet and USB-C. I really like that this camera has a tally light. In fact, it has two of them, and that's really important. When I'm in front of the camera, it's really nice to see that the camera is recording. But if there are people behind the camera that are working on set, they can see that the camera is rolling as well and know to keep it down, for instance. I also like that this camera has dual card slots. We have some redundancy there, and that's important, and they're both UHS-2 cards. We also have a cooling fan and this is a really crucial feature because it allows the camera to work even in very extreme temperatures like 40 degrees Celsius that we don't get here much in Canada, but it's going to keep the camera nice and cool and allow you to keep rolling. This camera does use the Micro Four Thirds mount and that's great because it gives us options for a lot of different lenses. Now one thing we don't have on this camera and helps keep it nice and small is we don't have a built-in ND filter. So if you are going to put a lens on here or a matte box or something like that, you'll have to address your neutral density needs externally. On top of the camera here we do have a hot shoe which I quite like. It gives me some options for a shotgun microphone or Panasonic's own dual XLR mount. You have to keep in mind though with the little dial we have here anything mounted on the hot shoe might block that a little bit and make it harder to use. This camera is all about customization. As we look around the camera we do have a function one button on the top but we also have three discrete ones on the front. The top right one is the power button but the other three here are all custom buttons that we can assign certain functions to. The most important thing about this camera is all the connectivity ports on the back of the camera. It's such a nice clean setup on the back of it too with these great high durable flaps that can actually come off the camera depending on how you want to set up your rig. And I think there's so many great options for your connectivity but some of the most noteworthy ones besides the full HDMI port is actually the PoE Plus. And so this gives you a lot of flexibility so if you're working in a studio that's already equipped with a PoE Plus Plus switch using Cat5e or Cat6 Ethernet cables. You can power and deliver your broadcast through that port or you can use the more standard USB-C as well and so you can connect easily no matter what web application you're using. The other set of noteworthy ports is the SDI 3G ports. Now of course these are more for monitoring, not as much for broadcast because they're only giving you a 1080 signal out of the camera. But they also provide time code sync as well as Genlock and this is absolutely essential if you're doing a multi-camera setup or something for live events. And the other thing is this has a headphone jack for monitoring your audio which is important because although the Panasonic Lumix software is very robust for monitoring your exposure and controlling the camera, one of the things that it doesn't have is the ability to monitor your audio settings without actually listening to the audio. So it's a good thing that we have that headphone jack in order to monitor your sound.
found on location. Let's get into this Panasonic Lumix Tether software. Now, of course, I will mention that a lot of this still is in the pre-production state, but so far we're really impressed with the overall interface. Being able to connect with it gives you the ability to go into the full menu system that you'd be used to seeing in other Lumix cameras. So you can control the exposure and you can tr control multiple cameras when this comes into market. And we're excited to see that you can do these multicam setups and you're able to control them remotely. And that's a big game changer for a lot of different applications that would use a plug and play web camera option like this. The BGH1 is a very niche camera. It's not mm -hmm. for everybody, but for the right person, I think it's going to be a fantastic option. Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot more demand for having multi-cam setups, being able to live stream, and having higher quality options, just given the times right now. And so I think Panasonic is right on point with the timing of this camera. And it has some features that are unique to this Panasonic form factor. And so being able to have the continuous tracking autofocus, that's a big thing. And of course, being able to shoot 420 10-bit 60p internally. And I think that the power options for this camera are pretty robust as well. I mean, being able to use those big juicy batteries and get up to like eight hours plus on, on this camera is impressive. I really like the flexibility of this camera. There's really nothing you can't plug it into, nothing you can't power it with. So it mm -hmm. adds to how you want to use it. I can take this camera and put it on a drone, battery operated, but I can also mount it into the rafters of an event and have it ethernet powered. Yeah, that's really cool. And I like that they've thought of a lot of nice features by placing everything in really appropriate spots. And so having all those quarter 20 threads so you can mount it in a lot of different positions and then having all of the cable management on the back of the camera to keep everything nice and tidy. I think that's awesome. Yeah, they've made a very nice, clean, very sort of industrial design camera. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned you like the corners are knocked off a little bit, so they're not anywhere really sharp edges to this camera, which are nice to work with. Yeah, it just makes it a great platform. And I think that given the current times right now, there's a lot more demand for this type of workflow. And so I'm glad that Panasonic has stepped out of their comfort zone and kind of went into the box to make something that, that is unique. <laughs> that is definitely a box, but <laughs> it is incredibly versatile and flexible. Absolutely. Of course, we wanna know, what do you guys think? Is this something that's on your radar? Is it something that you're interested in for your live streaming capabilities? Let us know what you think of it by commenting below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so we can catch you again very soon. These old boots still got a lot of ground. They ain't covered yet. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, click up here to see our latest episode. And if you're in Canada and you want to support us, then click down here to shop at the camera store.